Hello and welcome to a new Mod Showcase episode for Kerbal Space Program. This time around we are presenting a tool called Precise Note. If you have ever been annoyed about the inaccuracy of setting a trajectory with the mouse, stay tuned. Once we have installed the mod and have a ship in space, we can switch to map mode and see the new interface. This new window can be moved freely. Pressing P on the keyboard will show or hide it. There are four buttons below the title bar. The two arrow buttons on the left and right are used to navigate through existing nodes. If you click the button with the node name, you will focus on said node. The red delete button deletes the active node. Time refers to the expected arrival to the active node, which allows for easy trip estimations. Increments lets you choose specific values to add or subtract to other parameters. This allows for very precise changes to nodes, the real purpose of this tool. UT refers to the placement of a node at a given time. This means the absolute time of the whole session specified in seconds. If you want to reach a node in about, say, 20 minutes, you don't simply take 20 multiplied 60, which would be 1200 seconds, no. You have to take the in-game time, convert it to seconds at 1200 and that then would be the required value. This sounds totally overcomplicated at first, but this system makes it possible to create very precise maneuvers. It's still possible to click on the trajectory with the mouse to set a node and then manipulate the values with the new interface, which is much easier. Prograde means the acceleration in the current direction and can be set manually or be manipulated by the plus minus button. The left mouse button adds the selected increments value while the right mouse button subtracts it. Normal refers to the inclination of the orbit and can be manipulated in the same way as other values, typing it manually or using the plus minus button. Radial refers to the horizontal deviation of the acceleration in relation to the actual flight direction, meaning if zero degrees is the flight direction, then radial deviation means how far to the left or right you will point the nose while accelerating. Total delta V tells us how many meters per second of acceleration are necessary to carry out the planned course correction. This value also helps estimate fuel consumption and whether the spacecraft is even able to perform the maneuver. If the projected trajectory will take us out of the current sphere of influence, the values ejection angle and ejection inclination will show us the respective trajectory parameters in degrees. This is useful if we want to plan a transfer to another celestial body using a very specific set of values. Another useful feature are the two buttons MS and MR. Most of you know them from pocket calculators. MS, memory save stores the current values, which can later be restored with MR memory recall. This allows for easy experimentation without losing a good set of values. The bottom left button labeled Trip Info lists a set of planned flight path changes. 
Here we get a nice overview of all nodes with their respective arrival times and a summary of Delta V requirements for the whole trip. Focus on vessel centers the camera on our ship. Useful when we want to get back to our ship after we change the view to another object while planning a trajectory. There are two additional windows that can be opened. The buttons are located in the upper right. The O button opens additional options to choose from like showing extra controls or putting them into an extra window. Two useful ones are show additional UT controls, adding new buttons and show orbit information for additional trajectory information. The K button opens the shortcut window. All keyboard shortcuts are listed here and can be redefined individually. Conix mode refers to the representation of trajectories relative to their celestial bodies. You can see the implications of different modes once you cross spheres of influence. Conix mode zero draws every trajectory relative to the correlated celestial body. The future position of the body is ignored which gives the impression of trajectories not being connected to each other. This is not an error, this is by design. The advantage of this mode lies in the planning phase of a maneuver. Since every trajectory is drawn near the celestial body in its current position, one can focus on the body and manipulate the values without having to account for distortions. This simplifies the process a lot compared to other modes. Conix Mode 1 projects the location of a celestial body correlated to the trajectory into the future, meaning we see the body where it will be once we cross into its sphere of influence. The trajectory also gets connected, showing a continuous line till the axis from the new SOI. This mode has its benefits if you want to predict the position of a celestial body into the future to adapt to certain conditions like the moon of Corbin being in his day or night phase. Conix mode 2 is similar to mode 1 but it simulates the location of the celestial body when you are leaving its sphere of influence and connects flight paths accordingly. If you are doing flyby maneuvers and you compare mode 1 with mode 2, you will see how far the celestial body will move while traveling within its sphere of influence. This helps to plan how long one would want to stay near a planet till ejecting from its sphere of influence again. Conix mode 3 connects all trajectories, taking into account entry and exit from respective sphere of influences. This gives us a continuous trajectory which takes into account not only the motion of the spacecraft but also the motion of celestial bodies. This view lends itself to an overview but sometimes displays a distorted trajectory near another celestial body. In the next view you might feel the spacecraft will crash into the moon because the flight path would suggest that. The moment you turn on Conix Mode 1, you notice immediately that the actual flight path is quite safe. This distorted impression arises from the simple fact that the moon itself moves and Mode 3 takes this movement into account. Conix Mode 4 displays trajectories in a very flexible way and doesn't seem to make much sense. It distorts flight paths and positions of celestial bodies. While it can be used on short maneuvers, it seems quite impossible to use for extended planning. 
If you know of a specific purpose of this mode, you can tell us in the comments. In the following example, I will show you how to plan a typical trajectory to get to the moon. We are already in orbit around Kerwin and can now set our first node. First we check the position of the moon. Experience tells us that the ejection path should be about 45 degrees relative to the moon's position. This is only a rough estimate and can vary depending on where the spacecraft is. We set the node manually, then open the precise node interface by pressing B should it be closed and adjust the path to our needs. In Conix mode 3 we begin to increase the prograde value until we graze the moon's trajectory. Then we change the UT value until a sphere of influence transition appears. Our goal is to establish an emergency trajectory. Should the engine not function as expected, like breaking down and not igniting again, the spacecraft shall swing by the moon and return to Kerbin atmosphere automatically. It not only sounds complicated, but it would be difficult to achieve with stock manual mouse controls. This tool, however, makes aligning the trajectory feasible for everyone. Once we are satisfied with the trajectory, we turn to Conix Mode 1 and check whether the flight path around the moon is without dangers, as Mode 3 only shows us a distorted view. We do not want to accidentally hit the moon after all. Now we press the memory save button to save the current values. Then we go on experimenting with the flight path near the moon. Maybe we want to achieve a closer flyby. If we make mistakes or just are not satisfied with the result, we can change everything back hitting memory recall. The video description provides more information and links to the map.